So you already know about the polar form of complex numbers. This is going to be a quick recap all about that really fast. Now a complex number in Cartesian form can be expressed as A plus BI, real component, imaginary component. Put it on an Argand diagram like this, and we get a point on our Argand diagram, real component, imaginary component. So its coordinates are A, B. But knowing what we know about sine rule, cosine rule, unit circles, that kind of thing, we can express that a little bit differently. We can express those coordinates as r cos theta, r sine theta. That should look really familiar at this point. That means that we can express z a little bit differently. Down here, we can see that the real component can be expressed as r cos theta. r cos theta is equal to our real component. And the imaginary component can be expressed as r sine theta. r sine theta is our imaginary component. Now, of course, we can factorize that like that. And this bit is so common that it's useful to abbreviate it. And our final form is z is equal to r cis theta, where cis means cos theta plus sine theta i. So just to put some names on things, this is the polar form. This is the modulus, the length here. And this angle is called the argument. Now, an important thing to note here is that a complex number can be expressed with infinite arguments. Because this angle here, well, it could be this, but it could also be 2 pi plus this. It could also be 4 pi plus this. It could also be starting here and moving negative. That is, if you had a complex number 5 cis pi on 3, pi on 3, that would be the same as 5 cis 7 pi on 3. It would also be the same as 5 cis negative 5 pi on 3. But we do have this thing called the principal value of the argument. By convention, it is considered most polite and the principal value of the argument if your theta is between negative pi and pi. So if your complex number is down here somewhere, you took the negative angle. If your complex number is somewhere in quadrant 1 and 2, you use the positive angle. Up to pi and down to negative pi. That's most polite. So out of these three versions here, only one uses the principal value of the argument, and it's that one there. So a quick example here, we're going to convert Cartesian form to polar form. Z equals 4 minus 3i. If I drew it on a Cartesian plane, or an Argand diagram, sorry, it would look like 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, down here somewhere. Now, uh, I can find the r value because I know Pythagoras' theorem. The square root of 4 squared plus negative 3 squared is equal to 5. So that R value is 5. Now I just need to find this angle here, and it's going to be negative. All right, so if I need to find that angle, it's the same every time. 10 theta equals the imaginary component over the real component, and then adjust for whatever quadrant you're in. Now, if the numbers were neat, I'd do this calculator free, but they're not neat. So I put that into my calculator and I get negative 36.86 degrees or negative 0.64 radians, depending on what mode your calculator is in and what's being asked of you. All right, so we can finally give this uh, Z in polar form. It's equal to 5 cis, uh, and let's put it in radians, negative 0.64. And just to give you another quick, very super duper quick example, if the complex number had been different, say negative root 3 plus i, we could draw it on a Cartesian plane like that in our second quadrant. We could find uh, the modulus of 2. Tan theta equals imaginary over real, which gives us this value here. Now, if you're working out in your head, you'll figure out that theta is equal to pi on 6 as the reference angle, but you don't want the reference angle, you want this angle, which would be 5 pi on 6, and that would be that, but in polar form. Now, what if you want to go the other way? Uh, well, it's a good idea to keep in mind what this actually is. Remember, um, Argand diagram, length of 2, angle of negative 3 pi on 4. So it looks like this, a length of 2. We're looking for that coordinate right there, and that angle is uh, negative 3 pi on 4. The other thing that makes this pretty straightforward is remembering what cis actually means. It's short for 2 cos that angle plus 2 sine that angle i. So as long as you can solve that, which you should be able to do, cos negative 
3 pi on 4 is the same as negative root 2 on 2, which means that that is negative root 2. Now that's our real component of z, and of course you should also be able to solve that relatively straightforward, minus root 2i. And that's our neat little answer there. Now, you don't have to draw the Argan diagram, but I think you'd be a fool not to, uh, just because you can double check to make sure this makes sense. This makes sense for a couple of reasons. We've drawn it in the third quadrant, so these should both be negative. Also, uh, this angle here ends up being 45 degrees, right? So we would expect those two values to be the same. Uh, so that's converting polar to Cartesian. And being able to do this is really important for one simple reason. There is no easy way of adding polar complex numbers. If you want to add two complex numbers, that is z1 plus z2, you don't have a choice here. You need to convert them to Cartesian form, add them together in Cartesian form, and then if you want them in polar form, put them back again. So we take them in cis form and convert them to the expanded version of cis. And with a little bit of work, you'll get them into Cartesian form. And adding them is really simple. Add your real components, add your imaginary components, which gives us a final answer of this. Now, if they wanted it back in polar form, which is likely because they gave those two in polar form, then you would then need to convert that. And I've already shown you how to do that, so I'm not going to do it right now. Convert to polar if required. Now, different story if you are multiplying polar complex numbers, and it's way easier to do. So if we're doing z1, z2, and we're multiplying these two together, all we need to do is take these two numbers and multiply them together, and then cis, and then add our angles together, pi on 3 plus 2 pi on 3 we'll get an answer of 6 cis uh, 3 pi on 3, which is pi. That seems special. It's special because pi, 180 degrees, is on the x-axis. Now, if you think about what cis is again, it's 6 cos pi, that's 6 times 1. So we get 6 as a real component, and then it's 6 sine pi i. 6 sine pi is 0, so 0 i. That means that if you multiply these two complex numbers together, you get this answer, which is purely real. Now, I really just need to tell you the formula. Z1 times Z2 equals R1 times R2 cis theta1 plus theta2. And we've got something special or similar for division. But before I get there, I want to talk to you about the geometric interpretation of multiplying complex numbers. This one here is Z1, 2 cis pi on 3. That angle there is pi on 3. Now, when I multiply by 3 cis 2 pi on 3, I'm doing two things. One, I'm scaling it up. Because remember, I took the number 2 and multiplied it by 3, and we get the length of 6. What I'm also doing is adding the angle 2 pi on 3, which has the effect of taking this angle here and adding 2 pi on 3 to it. So we get something that rotates and scales up. So this was z1, 2 cis, pi on 3. We've rotated it and scaled it up, or vice versa, scaled it up and rotated it. Same idea. Let's do division. Now this is going to work just how you'd expect it to as well. 2 divided by 3, so our r's divided by each other, and then cis angle minus angle. And of course we should clean that up a bit. 2 pi on 3, cis, negative pi on 3. A formula right here. All right, lastly, we're going to look at powers. So raising polar complex numbers to a power, de Moivre's theorem, I don't know how to say that, uh, z1 equals 2 cis pi on 3 to the power of 4. To the power of 4 is just repeated multiplication, so it works the same. You could work this out just by doing this four times, or we can do it faster. It's going to be this to the power of this, cis, this, times that. Okay, and tidying this up a little bit, 2 to the 4 is 2, 4, 8, 16, cis, 4 pi on 3. Now, 4 pi on 3 is like over here, but it's not very like polite to express a polar complex number as 4 pi on 3, so we should express it this way instead as negative 2 pi 
on three. Now, of course, you'll want De Moivre's uh, formula, which is a little something like this. Z to the N equals R to the N cis N theta, and then tidy it up, make sure that you're being polite with your argument there. Complex numbers, polar uh, form, that's the full recap. Now let's learn some new stuff.